Thursday night. December the 3rd. That little camera here. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the Conscious Creative Toolbox. December the 3rd, 2020. First, first, first Thursday in uh, December. We're winding down in 2020, huh? Come on in. Come on in. We have some um, authentic uh, journey into authentic self to talk about tonight. We're going to finish up. We're going to go through the rest of the month talking about that, finishing it up. Um, I'm going to give you a few minutes to come on in. I'm going to ho hopefully, I'm going to keep it at right at about 45 minutes to 55 minutes. I'm going to talk too much, too long. But I, I do want to you know, share what I came up with today. Well, over the past few days, I've been kind of meditating and kneeling on it over for, for a few days. But anyway, the authentic self, we're going to be talking about um, from selfish to selfless to self reflection to self discovery. All the way over to the authentic self, so you can uh, you can live your true self and your truth. We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about it. Anyway, before I get started, though, I'm gonna have some announcements, and some some announcements to, to share with you. But if, you know, just come on in. It's, uh, you're listening to Jack Kim, Jackie, Jack Kim, I believe. Um, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, something like that. Anyway, we don't have right, we have no rights to the music. We just listen to it and enjoy it. I, I have everybody laughing because I, um, you know, people will call me and my, oh, my, my, my radio, my music. I, I seem to play continuously, probably 24-7 for me. I try to, you know, they remind me to turn your phone off, turn your phone off. So I do, I do that, you know, every now and again. But I forget, and I forget it's on, it's playing in the background. I, I hear it and I don't hear it, so I have to apologize if it's... If you, if you get that music, sometimes you say, you know, text me, I scroll for call me, and say, turn the darn thing off, so turn the music down, turn it off. So anyway, sometimes you have to remind me to do that. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know that we have no rights to this music, we just love it, we enjoy it, keep, you know, and help my vibration, I use it for keeping the vibes going, you know, keep myself moving and going, you know, escape to the music, you know, to the beat. Anyway. We like it. I'm going to turn it off now. I'm going to shut it down. And we're going to say again, welcome, conscious creators, conscious co-creators, conscious ones. Welcome to December the third session of the Conscious Creators Toolbox. And for those of you who, who don't know about the Conscious Creators Toolbox, I'll just tell you what it is. It's all about. It's an, it's an opportunity to explore, discover, explore, and to fine-tune, to tune up your personal, your individual creative abilities and creative powers, creative skills. You know, we have, we have to, you know, identify what they are. We take the time at Conscious Creators Toolbox to identify them, to recognize them, to embrace them, uh, to use them, put them to use. Uh, sometimes we, we, you know, we take things for granted that we just know what to do with what we got. And then we realize that, I don't know, I had that. Well, you do. You have it. You are created in the image and the, and the, you, you have absolutely every, you create out of the same stuff the creator and creation is made out of. And you can do, and you can, you can, you have the same powers and the same abilities and the same know-how. You have the same thing that is available to you, that is available to creation and to God and universe, you know, you know, that God, God withholds nothing from us. Universe withhold nothing from us. Just acknowledge that you have it. You know, acknowledge that you, you desire it, to acknowledge that you want to do, you want to learn and understand it better and put it to use. And, you know, it's like a muscle, you know, it's, you know, power is power is power. And, you know, all this stuff is, it's like muscles. You, you use it, it gets stronger and, and, and better. So when you don't use it, it just kind of, uh, uh, they don't need that one. So we'll just keep tucking it on the back shelf. But we try to get them out. We try to identify all of our abilities and all of our powers during, uh, you know, this, this time of day. This time of uh, this time of the week, once a week, we take a look at them and we pull them out and fine tune them and and put them to work, put them in use because we want to manifest. We want to be in. We want to manifest our own uh, our lives and our own experiences and our, we, we want we want to make this. We want to make stuff happen for us and we can. We can do that. We co-create with one another. We co-create with creation, with God, with the universe. Uh, we're all in this together. All in it together. So that's what the Conscious Creators Toolbox is all about. 
We meet once though once a week on uh, Thursday evening. In the past, we have been uh, working of uh, uh, meeting out at uh, Interfaith Truth Center out on Austell Road in uh, at Austell, Georgia, U.S. of A. Uh, we meet, we were meeting there until COVID hit. COVID kind of took us down for a while, but we didn't go down. We didn't go all the way down to the for the count. You know, they got to you know they got to almost to three or four or whatever. We said, hold up, hold up. We got some. We can make some space. We can do this thing. So we're back. We're here on uh, Facebook. We're on. Uh, we did a little Zoom. We, we still do a little Zoom too. We do some Zoom, uh, and we do. You know, we have a YouTube channel and we our uh, Instagram. You know, our Instagram account. We do those things too. So we post a little bit of in content out on both of the, all of those venues to try to maintain and continue to get the word and and get some information out to conscious creators. We wanna we wanna wake up folk. We want to make sure that when you wake up, that you got something to do. <laughs> you know, you gotta you be awake and aware and conscious, but you know you got you got you got work to do. So we will put you to work, and that's uh, that's the opportunity we, we present and on Thursdays. We give you an opportunity to to remember, recall who you are, what you are, whose you are, and what you got, what you're all about. So we're gonna be doing that tonight. And let's see what else I want to say before I get on into it. I want to shout out to ITC, Interfaith Truth Center. Uh, my, my family over there and friends over there, I had an opportunity to, uh, to meet with them on Sunday. I went, went over to support one of, my, uh, one of our conscious, conscious ones. She was speaking. Uh, she, she was speaking. She had, she, had a, she had a beautiful, beautiful singing bowl there. And I was like, wow, I was just mesmerized with the bowl. And then... Anyway, she she did she did that. She was talking, you know. She shared shared a little bit about, um, you know, just you know sharing with us. And I got a chance to go over and support her. And I got an opportunity to see an old friend who came back in town from Phoenix. She was out in Phoenix. She's moved out to Phoenix, and she came back and she was visiting uh, her family during the holidays. So I got a chance to see her. And it was kind of nice to see her. And I just got to see my family over there. We don't, I don't get over there too often. Uh, once every six weeks for sure when I speak. But you know, I. Kind of did some. Did, I, I did a little extra this past week because they had to go buy some, uh, some some products, and I wanted to get a few things. So I stopped by to pick my crystals and things up over there, and I found out that uh, that Tessie Tessie Love was speaking on Sunday. So I just wanted to come back and give her some support and some love. Yeah, I got a word too. I got a word. Appreciate that. So want to shout out to them. Let them know that I'm still here doing Conscious Creators Toolbox on Thursday night. And I would like to invite you to their website to take a look at their website. I am a part of their vision and their mission over there, and I, I support what they do. I support the, support the community that they have over there and the, and the works that they do over there. So I, I want to give let them know that. And if you have an opportunity to stop in on the on the um, on the website, let them know. Let them know that yeah, Jean is still doing her still still doing the Conscious Creators Toolbox, and you know, kind of give me some. Some high fives, or you know, some give me some atta girls, you know. Let, let them know what's going on. Let them know that we're still, we're still, uh, you know, waking up folk and keeping them awake and getting them into their creative juices and their creative abilities and powers. So let them know that when you do make a donation, they have a little button you can press and you can, uh, you know, support their. They are a nonprofit um, community, spiritual community, um, and they are a gift, a gift shop and a. They do some. They do all types of workshops and, and and sessions and things over there. They do Zoom. Um, I'm sorry. They do uh, yoga. They have some yoga classes. They have. Um, uh, they have. What they call it? Um, well, they do Reiki. Reiki. Reiki share. Reiki share. Where you can go in and and have some have a Reiki session or two. Uh, they do tarot readings. They have tarot card readers and there's crystals. Um, your sage or your smudging smudging supplies over there. Books. Nice light. Have a nice library. You can. You know, just kind of hide out over there, a little zen, a little zen mode going on over there. So stop in, stop in on their website. It's www.interfaith.com. Um, check them out. Check and see what's going on over there. You may want to take some of those sessions uh, that they have, some of the classes and workshops and things that they have going on. They do have a Sunday service. They meet on Sunday morning um, at 11. Um, that, that, that as well, and I think they have something pretty, pretty much going on every day. And they do have, I mean, I believe, I believe they still have a kind of an abbreviated uh, schedule, but you can find that information on the website as well. Um, 
and I know for sure that they have a limited they they have a limited um, number of space available when they do any of the workshops because they are very very conscious and very mindful of social distancing and making sure that you know uh, people are you know coming and going and, and healthy and I don't I'm not sure if they use I don't remember they're using a, the thermo thermometer you have to check your temp but I'm not sure if they do but if they do don't be offended you know just want to make sure you're well when you come in because we want you to be well when you go out so um yeah so stop and tap on the website check them out Press that uh, donate button, and when you do, if you if you're doing it on on behalf of the conscious creators, please let them know that so they'll know that um, you know I'm still here, still here, uh, doing my doing my do for them and uh, their mission and their vision. Uh, tell you about the YouTube channel. Uh, we are, we do, we're you know building up some content over there. Uh, so stop in. It's uh, Team Conscious Creators. It's the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, the name of the YouTube channel, the name of our Facebook channel, a Facebook group page now, as well as our um, Instagram account and our Twitter account. I believe we have a Twitter account as well. So it's Team Team Conscious Creators. That's the name. That's who we are. So check us out. Join. Subscribe to us. Subscribe to um, the YouTube channel, um, and and like us. Comment. Make some comments on if you would in regards to the content that you happen to review or take a look at and did want to announce that I am I am really interested in talking with and interviewing and having as my guest an astrologist an astrology person that you know is the horoscope you know about the signs of the zodiac and your horoscope and and um, interested in having having a guest having that person at the guest so if you are an astrologist or an astrology you know astrology very well and you've got some training in that area you got some a passion your passion flows that way <laughs> give me a, a message me let me know introduce yourself to me um and let's talk let's talk about me getting you getting you in and and doing some uh doing, doing a session with them um, with this on on one of these thursdays um a numerologist well as well we're looking for someone that understands numerology uh, i just like to have that person you know, join us for a session or two, give some training. Also looking for a light worker who has a passion for crystals and understand, um, you know, the, the what, what crystals uh, do what and, and how what how the crystals affect affect the, the um, your your energy centers and things like that. So if you are a, a, an astrologist or uh, you have numero numerology. Uh, experience or uh, expertise to your light worker and if you handle and deal with crystals and understand what they what they're good for you know i i do the energy bracelets and i i i i, I cheat because i look it up and i i make the you know put the bracelets together and my, my my sister called my sister was here during thanksgiving and she said i want some i want a bracelet that, that gives you know something to do with prosperity and so i hooked her up you know i sent her away with a couple of bracelets for uh she went back to north carolina so she's she took some bases with her. But I want somebody that really has a passion for it, crystals and an understanding of how it affects our energy center. So give me a shout so we can get ready. I want to get ready for next year. Got some things in mind to do for next year. But I, I'm looking for some partners. I'm looking for some co-creators, if you will. Some conscious ones who uh, have passions in those areas. So give me a shout out if you are interested in being a guest on the Conscious Creators Toolbox or a session of some sort, anyway. You can message me at, um, you know, on the Facebook page, I'm Jean Aaron, or you can uh, email me at info at com. That's my email address. Uh, so just let me know, let me know if you're interested. The two, uh, we are, we the Conscious Creators Toolbox, um, we're it, probably after the first of the year, we're negotiating with probably going back into into the ITC Center to have maybe um, a workshop and broadcast out of there to, to invite um, a, a participants to actually, actually can get attend to come and attend some of the sessions. But we're only going to do it once a month. We, we meet every Thursday, but I think one, one Thursday out of the month we want to go into ITC uh, specifically to, um, you know, to have sessions there. And we, and we, again, we like to open them up to 
you if you'd like to attend some of them. And it's, again, it's going to be very limited space because we don't, uh, we are, you know, required to practice uh, social distancing. So the seating, the, the space will be very limited, probably anywhere from uh, six to about 10 people, probably at the most, can I, that would be available to attend a session. But we'd like for you to do that because what we want to do is those evenings that we do have a guest. Uh, that's going to be joining us. We would like to to meet there, so we're kind of trying to work it out with them. We haven't got a date for sure yet when we're going to start that on a Thursday, which Thursday of the month we're going to do it. So as soon as I get that uh, all negotiated and ironed out with IT with the Interfaith Truth Center, I will get I'll make that you know let you know so you can make plans to join us at um, at the center. Sometimes wear your mask, you know, um, wear your gloves if you want to, or bring your notepad because we we talk a lot and we. We want to share, but and, and also bring your, you know, just you know, bring up your spirit of participation because we like uh, we want to hear, I like it. I want and I see people. I want a two way, two way conversation because I want to. I want to get something too. I want to learn something too. And I get something from from you, the participants, when we meet. When I meet face to face, I'm not just talking to a, a camera. I can talk to you, and you can talk back. So I'll let you know on that. I'll let you know how that goes. We um, again, we want to make sure that you continue to join us on Sunday at seven for seven for seven at seven on Sunday mini life coach session. It's about a thirty anywhere from about a ten seven minute to about a thirty thirty minute session, a real quick session, and it's a, just a kind of quick overview, something that we can just kind of um, cover and or, or talk to you, or share with you about. Um, you know, it's usually usually it's a topic that I've taught, I've had a during the week, maybe with a client or the week before, or a question that came up, or some that something that somebody actually uh, somebody emailed me and wanted some input or whatever. So I share those. So I share those things, especially when they kind of hit, kind of resonate with me, and I'm you know kind of reminds me of some things that I may be going through at the same time. So I like to share those. So many many life coach session on Sunday. Like the, I'd appreciate you joining us for those. Uh, and if you miss any. Go to our YouTube channel. You can pick some up and, and refer, you know, just kind of share them forward, you know, let, you know, share them forward. You know, it, whatever the topic is, I guarantee you that somebody that you know would benefit from, uh, you know, just the sharing the, the, the you know, that the particular session. So share, share them, uh, um, share them forward, you know, just to let people know that they're there. Team Conscious Creators, remember the blue man, uh, look for the blue man uh, on uh of our logo, all right. So, I think those are my announcements. So tonight we're gonna go on. We're gonna continue uh, the session on on um, self. You know, just your journey into yourself. You know, self discovery and identifying that authentic person, that true you, the real you, the you that is the authentic you, the one that, you know, after you take off all the mask and, you know, all the hoopla and, and uh, you know, get rid of, you know, identifying yourself as to what you do or having somebody else identify you as whoever, you know, you know, do we get just going to, you know, all mask off, all mask off. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty. That's what we've been talking about over the past uh, three or four weeks. And we're going to continue. We're going to, you know, go on into the end the year out with talking about, um, the authentic self, the real you. But tonight we're taking a little bit of a detour, this next couple of sessions, I think. We're going to take a little detour because we're going to talk about it in a, in a different kind of... So we're going to look at it in a, in a different state or different we're going to look at ourselves and, and that self and, and, and the journey and, and understanding how, you know, when the journey begins and as we, you know, wake up and be real and realize that we're on the journey and, and then how we react to being on that journey and, 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 and there's twists and turns and the detours and the stops and the, and the byways and the, you know, the detours that, that we take on the journey. We're going to talk a little, kind of look at it in that perspective. So what I want to do is I want to look at it over the next few weeks, we want to look at it uh, in the stage of, you know, going from the selfish to the selfless to the person that self-reflect to the person that really understands and discovers that they're on a journey and all the way down to the authentic self. You know, we got, we're, not going to, we're not going to talk about the math so much, but we're going to talk about the our state of being during that, during our, our journeys. 
because we take on various various um, states of being in life in our lives we you know we can be almost we can be anything and we can be anybody we can act in any way we want to act you can I can act like you you can act like me I can act like you know uh, you know I don't know George Washington I can act like you know I you know I can take on some of those characteristics of those beings or those people that have lived in the past lived some 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 years ago or some some years and years and years ago I can still live or or live to the best of my understanding of their particular state of being. I can imitate them. I can imitate them a little bit. I can like parts of what I understand about their life, and I can assume their, um, their that role or that identity, if you would. So we're going to talk about it in the perspective. We're going to talk about it in the, in the perspective of selfishness, because usually when we come here, when we come as babies, as little babies, we come here selfish. We come here, and you know, and, it, and it's selfish. And I want you to, I want to say, I want to say this, be real clear on this. And I want you to continue to, like I always ask you to have an open mind. Be open minded. Um, if you hear something that resonates with you, good, 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 good. But I always say, you know, listen and listen and listen until you hear something that resonates with you. And that way, kind of dismissed it, judgment. It kind of goes away a little bit because when you can hear something that you can relate to, ah, you know, kind of, you know, you don't need to judge at that point. You just kind of like, okay, let's just talk a little bit more and get a little bit more understanding and, have, you know, the meshing of, the meshing of the mind, okay? But, um, so tonight we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about um, when we, first, when we're just first babies, when we come here as babies, little babies, and you know, I have not met a baby yet that wasn't self-absorbed, all into themselves, you know, it's all about them, it's me, 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 mommy, mommy, me, 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 I don't, you know, everything, is, everything about them, if they wake up to, to, uh, to awareness, or just realizing that they are, but they don't really understand that, you know, you're not them, everything about what they awake to, or they are aware of, come to, come to consciousness about, it's them, it's themselves, and they don't see or understand any separation at all. And that's something that, you know, they hold on to that for a brief while, you know, very brief. <laughs> too, too brief, if you ask me. But um, I wish they could hold on to it long enough for them to realize that um, what they're holding on to, you know. But they don't, we, we don't give them that, that opportunity. But, you know, so brief. But anyway, when babies come, babies come there, and, and children, they're, they're, you know, they're self centered. It's just all about them. You know, it's all about them. I wake up, baby wakes up and looks around and realizes that I, that I am. I am. This is me. I am. And everything about what they see and experience, they don't see it as anything other than part of them, part of themselves. Everything about what they see and they experience is all about them. Um, they, 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 you know, they start, you know, discovering little things going on with their bodies and, and, you know, the things that they see and, you know, I, if, you've, if you ever watched a child or baby in their crib or, or just kind of laying there and googling and gaga to themselves and then they hold up their little hands and they're, you know, they're looking at it and they're looking at it like, oh, okay, what is this all about, you know, and they're trying to get a grasp on it and or they see a little mobile hanging over their, over their heads and, and they're all into that and, and then they hear little noises and things and it's all part of themselves. They have not start separating themselves from all of the all of the experiences and everything that they're experiencing visually and and and, and audit and hearing and and even tasting because they you know they're well they'll put things in their mouth and that's them too that's you know that's part of what you know that's part of me too they don't understand that it's not them until mommy and daddy and sister and brother and doctor and nurses come along and and start you know pointing things out to them they don't really then you know and babies don't get really happy with that initially they don't, they don't buy it. No, they don't. They, you know, they know that if they make enough noise that uh, something will happen and uh, somebody, you know, something will come along and uh, some part of me will come along and stick something in my mouth and, you know, get me all satisfied, my tummy and going on. And, or somebody will just, you know, or, or I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's like, I'm qu it's kind of quiet around here and I make a little noise and cry a little bit. You know, somebody's going to show their little, a face is going to appear. And again, they don't think anything of it. They just, it's part of them. 
It's all, they're all, it's, you know, it's what, like one big me. It's one big me with ba what baby says. And baby, baby's very demanding. Babies are very demanding. And again, they have no, they could care less about what, how long, how many hours you slept or didn't sleep last night. You know, they get hungry. They get these sensations going on in their little bodies or something's uncomfortable about whatever's happening in and about them, you know, they're going to make some noise, you know, make some noise and they're going to not be happy about it. And they realize that, you know, if I make enough noise, you know, something's going to happen. You know, something's going to happen to relieve this discomfort or this stress or this hunger or this thirst that I'm, this, this feeling. Something's going to happen. Uh, I'm, you know, am I making enough noise to, you know, to bring, bring an event, bring an, have an, have an experience that's going to make me happy. And that's, you know, that's the baby's world. Babies are, that's what they were. And I thought, you know, I found this, um, and they're selfish. Babies are selfish. Selfish. It's just, it's me, 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 my, my, my. Uh, it's all about, you know, me. That's when you're a baby. That's who it's about. Again, they could care less about what time you went to bed last night or what how, how late you slept or whether you, you know, you worked all day and you still had to come home and take care. I don't care. Babies do not care. Babies don't care. They're selfish. They are selfish. And I want to remind you that selfish is not always bad. Uh, in fact, in my opinion, there's not a whole lot of things that are bad or good. They just are. Okay? So in a baby's world, selfish is the way life is. And that's how we are when we start this journey. We start the journey out by being selfish, by being very conscious of just us or me. And it's all about me, 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 my, my, my. And... You know, just I can I, I know I, I realize that I can act a certain way or, or make a certain noise or whatever, whatever, you know, I don't know what, how they come. You know, babies come here knowing they don't come here. You know, they don't come here with all, you know, a whole lot of understanding or or, or enculturation. It's that's what we do to them. We do that to them. They come with knowing they come. They come with these instincts of instincts and they're just discernible knowing, just a knowing that came from the other side or the. Came from came with them from creation or creator. Just you know, came with came, they were packaged. But again, they don't have any concept of anything other than themselves. And that's how we start our journey. We start our journey that way. And then once we get here, we get mommy and daddy. Then they're gonna start training. Is it gonna start showing us that ah, uh, it's not always about you, baby, 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 darling, baby, cute baby, whatever. You know, it's not always about you. You know, my, I'm, I, you know, like I'm gonna get some sleep tonight, and you, you know, you, we're just gonna let you, we're gonna let you cry a little bit. You know, you know, but you know, right now, we baby knows that if I make enough noise, somebody's gonna come and satisfy this sensation I got going on here. But mommy and daddy decide that they're gonna teach me now that it's not all about me. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's a tug, it's a tug of war for for a little bit. You know, that's my that's my daughter and and my my son. They will tell you that uh, they have they have four boys and each one of them have a whole different temperament and a whole different schedule and understanding about going from selfish to understanding is you know this other people in the world besides them and understanding that oh okay that's uh. That's you and this is me, you know. You, you, have to, you have to teach babies that. You have to teach babies that, that you know. I, I was holding my grandson the other day and, and uh, <laughs> he was trying to put, he was trying to put his, my finger in his mouth because he, you know, I guess he wanted that experience. This is whatever he was going to get ready to do with my finger. I don't know, but he wasn't getting it. So I just kind of moved my finger out of the way and he, and I put his finger in it. Well, he's getting a tooth and I didn't realize that. So he... I put the, you know, he got his finger and I stuck it in his mouth and he bit into his finger and I guess it hurt. So he kind of started him a little bit and he cried a little bit. And I thought, ooh, I didn't realize that he had, I didn't do this on purpose because I didn't know he had a, a tooth coming until my daughter said, because, you know, I, she, she said, what happened? I said, well, he kind of bit his finger. She says, oh yeah, he's got a tooth. So he was teething. So he began to understand that, well, if he had bit my finger, it would have, I would have cried, but he wouldn't have probably understood that. But I think that he understood that, you know, that his finger, that, that you know, he caused something going on that he wasn't too pleased about with that, with that finger. But anyway, but, but that, that's just a side note I just kind of noticed the other day. But back to understanding, helping, helping the babies and helping the children understand that, uh, you know, 
they're, it's not all about them, you know, and it's, you can be selfish uh, only to a point and you have to start growing up and that's part of your own culture. It's part of your training and your own culturation into, into human, a humanoid. You're now you're a human being and you're not, you're, you're a baby, but now you're going to grow up and you're going to be a, you're a big boy now and you're a big girl now and, and you get to, you know, you get to sit in this chair by yourself and you get to, you know, play with your food and feed yourself and, you know, get all these, these different sensations and you, and you begin to understand that it's, oh, okay, that's not, that's, that's her and that's mine. And that's, but it takes a while. It takes a while for a child to go through that. I thought, I found this cartoon the other, uh, today earlier when I was looking for selfish and there was this kid, this, this little, little sister and brother and, and the little sister had all the toys and she was just kind of like keeping them, they're mine. And the little brother was standing there looking, looking like he really wanted to play, but she was like, oh no, 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 these are mine. So it takes, um, it takes, we come here being selfish and culturation and learning and teaching us, it teaches us, life teaches us and, and, and relationships with, uh, with people outside of ourselves began to teach us that we are separate. We are two separate. We're separate. We're not, you, you know, you're you and this is mom and this is daddy and this is brother and this is sister and that's your finger and that's my, that's grandma's finger and that's, uh, that's your chair and that's my chair, that's your bed and that's my bed and, you know, so they be, we can begin to teach them and, and help them understand the difference uh, between themselves and everything else about them and in the world. And unfortunately, well, I don't know if it's unfortunately, it's just part of, part of the process. But what happens is, for me, I, I, think, I, I think it's kind of unfortunate that in the process of learning that we are separate from each other and from stuff and things, I, I think that we do a, an injustice because we don't help we don't help the baby, the child, the children understand that there's still there's still a connection. There's still a connection between themselves and all the other stuff that we in cult we start teaching them that they're separate from, and that then we don't help them understand that there is a there is a connection. There is a bond. There's a connectability, a connectivity about us that could never be broken. And it's just because we say it or we, we, we express it or we, we teach you to react or, or act a certain way toward it rather than accepting it or embracing it as part of who you are, then what, that, what happens consequently is that we begin to um, go from self, selfish to kind of a whole different, a, a different kind of selfish. Because now we're, you know, and, and, it, and it could be, it could be a, um, I'm going to say it could be a selfishness that could not be useful or helpful to us as, as um, in our relationships. Uh, because, I mean, like, like with kids, like you could, when, when, uh, when, kid, when you're trying to help a child understand that, you know, you want to share with your brother. You want to, you know, you, you know, you don't, you know, you, you got 20 toys over here in your stack and he didn't have any and you're not playing with but one at a time so you know we have to teach them to share to share so they we go from selfish to learning that okay i can share i mean i can you know i you, you can have part of my toys and or i can share i can i can share time with you okay mommy and daddy you can you know you can have you can sleep tonight and and i'm gonna sleep in my bed and i'm gonna you know have my eight hours and nine hours of sleep and you're gonna get your five or six or whatever you get and it's gonna be cool i'm gonna sleep in my bed you're gonna sleep in yours i'm gonna i'm gonna you know suck my thumb and you know let you do whatever you want to do with your finger and your thumbs i'm gonna sit in my little chair and i'm gonna eat my dinner and i'm gonna watch you uh eat yours but you know, it's, it, but but you, it, you have to teach kids that. You have to teach them that because they don't come here understanding that at all. They, it's all about them. It's all about them. I'm gonna tell a funny story. I'm gonna share something that's really that's also kind of funny with uh, with my daughter, my middle daughter, when she was, um, I think she was maybe two, two or so, uh, and she was not quite understanding about you know mine and yours. She everything was she was still about her. You know, I was I was kind of slow at teaching my kids that separating stuff, you know. I, yeah. I, I, I didn't want them to be selfish, but you know, I just, I was a little slow about it. But anyway, she, um, she was with her grandma one, one, uh, one afternoon and 
They were sitting there. My mom shared this with me. They were sitting there. Uh, she had her on her lap. And my mom was e eating a, a piece of chicken. She A chicken drumstick or whatever. And my daughter was looking at her eat it. And it, I guess she wanted the chicken. She wanted it to taste it too. So my mom is getting ready to bite into it. And my daughter reached, reached for the chicken drumstick in her mouth, <laughs> just as my mom tracked, you know, went down on it and bit the poor little baby's finger. And of course she got upset. Well, they thought that was so funny, but then I, and you know, I thought about it later. I said, well, she just wanted the chicken and she realized that it was, that was a piece of chicken and she wanted it. So she went to, she grabbed it. She took it. She wanted it. She didn't, you know, it was hers. You know, that's, I want that. I'm going to get it. You know, so that's how, that's how we, we come here. We come here thinking that everything is about us and it's all, and it is, it is about just us. And we as parents and as caregivers have to help children understand or babies understand that, yeah, it is, you are important. You are, you know, you're just the, you know, the apple of my eye, you know, I will, you know, I'll lay my life down for you, but you know, you got to learn how to share. You know, you got to grow up and you got to stand on your own two little feet and you got to, you know, sit in your own little chair and, you know, do your own little thing. You want to teach how to go to the potty. We want to teach you. We got to teach you all kind of little things that you're going to be able to do on your own and by yourself. And and then we're going to teach you how to share it with your sister and your brother and your mommy and your daddy and, 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 and have a and have a harmonious kind of relationship. Now, that's a journey. That's that's a journey that we start. We start our life out on that journey of being me, 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 and my, my, my. And then we move from there to, you know, understanding that we, to be a part of a community, we're going to have to relate to that community. And we're going to have to relate. And, and unfortunately, we relate. We relate. We truly, truly relate separate. We, we relate in a way that you're you and I'm me. And, and, you know, you have your thing and I have mine. And never shall the two meet, you know. And I don't really get into your you know, what bothers you, I just, you know, tend to myself, tend to me, and I let you tend to you. But really, really what, what, what we really should do is we should learn to be, to share, and we go from, from sharing to, well, what I call, and it's called selfless, selfless, and selfless could be altruism, altruism. Uh, and, and so we know that, we know that selfish is a person that attends to, or that's, that's more attentive to, their own needs and their own concerns and just about me, like children, like babies. But we don't always, we don't stay babies forever. We don't stay babies forever. Uh, we grow up and we teach and then in the process we're taught uh, about sharing and about selflessness and about love and about caring for someone other than you and understanding that it's not all about you. But we want to hold on to a bit of that selfishness because that's where we uh, we need that we need we need to attend to some part of ourselves because we we are responsible for our health and happiness and our well-being so you know at some you know so we hold on to a little bit of that uh self-love i call it self-care and self-love uh, you can call it selfish too but it's, it is a bit of selfishness and self-love and a little bit a bit of selfishness and self-care uh, because you you're you know you're you are attending to yourself, but look at it in this way because it's part of your journey. Your journey it is your journey and it's my journey. We all have our individual journeys, but we are on we are we are, you know we 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 walk in the same pathways sometimes. So when we walk the same pathways, we have to relate and we we have to come into contact with each other and, and have a have a relationship. So we need we need to be beyond just selfish. Because there's someone else in the mix, and there's somebody else in, on the on the on the road with us. So we got to share the road. Uh, we can't, you know, you know, we can't be all over the road, you know. When there's four or five people on the road, we got to, you know, stay in our lane, you know. So that's that. That's where the sharing comes in, and and the understanding that it's not just about you, um, but you are you do have a responsibility of being a being healthy and, and, and being well and, and making sure that you care for yourself so that you can have a healthy and, and a happy and a prosperous relationship with whomever, whomever, you know, your, your friends and families may be, you know, that's, that's you. And again, we learn that. This is something that we learn as, as we're going up. And, and as children, as, as children, we get that in understanding from our parents and from the, the grown-ups in our lives, from people that are older than us. Well, we move from selfishness 
learning sharing and learning how to relate and connect with one another through selfless, being understand, being selfless. And selfless, uh, the, uh, the definition of selfless, I think I did do a different, self, do, uh, the definition of self, selflessness, yeah, it can be a little tricky because um, hmm, it's, uh, uh, some people say, you know, can you really truly be selfless? Well, there are people that were selfless, for sure. You know, there's uh, people that were selfless. They may not have been 100% selfless, but they were selfless enough that they would attend to someone else's needs sometimes before they did to their did theirs or they or they they attended to someone else's they were concerned about someone else uh over and beyond their concern for themselves because they understood that that particular incident or experience of selflessness was for the higher good it was not just for the good of me or the other person but it was a, it was the good it was a higher good for both, keeping both people in, into, into consideration. So that's the thing with selflessness. Selflessness, even though it appears that you're putting someone above yourself, what you're doing is you're putting, you're realizing or you're getting, you're, you're revisiting that knowing that you came here with, knowing that there is a, a higher good. There is a good that that is for the good of all, the good of you know, if, if I do this, not only would it benefit that person, but would also benefit this per, me and that person. And it, it has a, like a snowball or, or a bigger encompassing effect. So selflessness to me, <laughs> uh, and I, I'm, I, I go a little bit beyond what the dictionary says, because the dictionary basically says that, you know, somebody, you're putting somebody else before you. Well, you are, but you're doing it not for any not not being not singling up but it's for the higher good you know you've under you know your your intuition and your connection with the with with source and with god and in your higher power and your, and the and and creation and universe help you understand that what you do is for the good for the greater good so uh, a selfless person is usually somebody like well, you know, there's they have the traits of selfless. I don't know, like um, name a few. Martin Luther King. I mean, he's a, he was one. Um, he, our president. And, you know, if you have some patriotic uh, presidents and then folk, no, not not the not not the politicians. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking statesmen. You know, people that understand that they have love for country, which means that it's a love for all the people that are in that country. So those are those. those that would be a selfless person that puts their needs above. Someone else's. I, my grandmother was probably one of the ones, and I had an aunt, uh, also a couple of, of, of uh, relatives that were. Um, th they had a lot of selfless, selfless actions and selfless motives, motivations about you know how they lived their lives. That that true, authentic person that they were. It wasn't always about them, and it wasn't always about just their household. It was about you know the community, the community as a whole, the community in general. So a selfless person would be somebody that would be would be um, not so self centered, um, but would be would but would be care, self caring them or loving themselves enough to understand that that was that was necessary for the higher good, not just for them but for the higher good. You know, if I'm walking around here sick or not taking care of myself and not practicing social distancing and all the other things that. You know, they wanted to. Then I'm I'm being I'm not only being negligent to me, but I'm being negligent to the community as well. Because if I go out and jeopardize my health, and without any consideration that is jeopardized, and I just go marching right on away and into a crowd of folk, you know, haven't even took my temperature or whatever, and with was sick or whatever, then I'm you know I'm I'm jeopardizing the, the I'm you know I'm not looking out for the higher good. So um, again, selflessness. It doesn't mean, it, it, it means that you are concerned for just life in general, just, the, just life and, and just overall the higher good. It's not that you're putting yourself down. It's not that you're putting anybody else up on a pedestal. But what you're doing is you are caring for man. You're caring for human. You're caring for life. Because that's what we are. We're connected to life. Because I am you, you're me. We, we are one, you know, we're connected. And that's something, that, again, that we forget or we lose in the enculturation of our, of, 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 you know, 
hum, you know, just being in this physical world and, and, and learning how to negotiate and, and travel and, and, and be a part of it, you know, we're taught that we're separate. But in truth, we are not. In truth, I'm you and you're me. You know, selflessness it does, it walks that. It walks that out. That's, prob that's probably the best way to put it. Selflessness walks the fact out that we are connected, that we understand that you're me and I'm you. And selflessness comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of unconditional love. Without any, without any conditions on it, because I know that if, we, if I'm you and if we're the same, if I'm looking at you and I'm looking at me, then how could I possibly, I don't know, judge? You know, it kind of leaves that, leaves that word like a non-word, really. Because uh, if, you, when I, when I'm, if I'm judging you, basically I'm judging me, right? And I don't have a need to judge myself, not really. And, and I shouldn't have a need to judge you. Um, if I love you, then I'm loving me. If I'm loving me, I'm loving you. That's selflessness. That, that's, that's the whole basis of selflessness. It comes out of a place of empathy, compassion, and love. Uh, love, love. Tonight, I just wanted to kind of touch on those. So I wanted to touch on, on selfless, selfishness. And I wanted to contrast it with selflessness. Uh, because they are two different things. I just, self, selfish, selfishness is just self-centered. You are... I am not worried about, you. hey, you do your thing, I do my thing. You know, I'm always saying that, but I don't always mean it quite like that. But, you know, that's, that's selfish. Selfish is, I'm looking out for me, you know. I get the big piece of cake, you know. You, whatever's left, you, you have it, you know, but this is mine, you know. But we move from there to understanding and realizing that we're all in this kind of together. And the closer I can get to relating and 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 having um, a positive and a good vibrational feed, uh, vibrational relationship with you, the better we're going to be. The better, the better the journey is going to be for both of us, right? Because uh, we're both going to be traveling this journey, and we both, we all start out pretty much the same way. Selfish. We all start out, start out that baby, that baby selfish, and we, you know, we get these parents, these moms and dads and uncles and all you know, these folks that's going to help train you. I'm going to potty train you. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And I'm going to teach you how to, I'm going to teach you, you know, you're going to stay in bed. You're going to sleep eight hours a night. You're not going to, you know, we, you, you, you're, you're not going to get me up. I'm, you know, so we go through that process with the babies, but we just help with basically teaching them how to, how to navigate this physical earth realm and this body suit, this sort of the earth suit that we're, we've, we've, and we've, uh, you know that we're living in or it's living in us whatever uh but that we, we it's taught we're taught we and it's called it it was it's a term called enculturation we're taught how to be human and if uh if we didn't have parents to teach us then whoever was you know helping us acclimate into society into whatever society it is you know be it i don't know like cat suck cat society whatever you know you're gonna have somebody to teach you all the ropes, teach you the do's and the don'ts and the and the do's and the and the can do's and the can't do's. Okay, so but we move we move in that. That's 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 our journey. That's part of our journey. And and normally we don't wake up to the fact that we're on a journey until later in life. Sometimes later, later, later in life, if we really come to realize that we are. But we've. We've existed in all in that stage of selfishness. We've existed in that stage of self selflessness, self care, um, understanding that you know you know we stand on our own two feet and we're, we're responsible for who we are and what we are and what we how we do it. But we don't totally understand that it's a journey and that we are supposed to enjoy it. We're supposed to have fun with it. We're supposed to be okay with it. And that's why that's why I don't I, I encourage people to try not to label things that are good or good or bad. This is what I try to do, and, and I and I t hopefully taught my kids this. Instead of saying something is good or bad, you know, just look at it and what this is what you desire, or maybe what you don't desire. And, it, and just because you don't desire it, doesn't mean that I can't desire it. So. That's for you. That's, that's your decision to make because it's your life and it's your journey. 
And it's your, those, those are your decisions to make. Those are the choices you can make that decision. You make the choice to whether you want, you desire that in your life or you do not. But just because you don't desire it does not necessarily mean that it's bad. You just don't desire it for you. It doesn't work for you. It doesn't serve your purpose. It doesn't serve your need. But it's not either good nor bad. Nothing is. Not everything is just, it just is. And it's according to whose, whose perspective is being received or looked at or used or utilized. It's that, that's when it gets to whether it's um, desired or not desired. Anyway, I, that, that's just kind of something I just wanted to kind of, re, kind of remind you because I know selfishness is an, it's who we are. It's who we were, are when we come here. We're selfish. But we're not bad. We're beautiful human beings. We're beautiful spiritual beings uh, who's here getting ready to have the experience of this lifetime. And we listen and we, we you know, we're taken under the wings of our of our parents and people that love and care for us to show us how to how to how we're gonna enjoy this this route, this uh, this journey that we're on. Because you know, these are some of the rules that you gotta, you know, you just gotta live your life by these rules. That's how it is. Not that, not that um, you can't one day, you know, create and manifest something different for yourself. But you know, you know, as long as you, as I say, as long as you're in my house, that's how you're gonna work it, Jean. I says, okay, Grandma, okay, Ma. But you know, as you get older, then you start calling your own rule, your, your own rules and your own your own thing. There's something that I, that I I found and I wanted to. I hope I wrote it. I hope I kind of wrote it down because I thought it was something really really good. Okay. The best day of your life is the one in which you decide that your life is your own, that you own it. It's your life. No apologies, no excuses, no one to lean on or to rely on or to blame. It's you. It's just your life. The gift is yours. It wasn't given to me. I got my own gift. You got your gift. It's your gift. It's your life. You own it. You're the owner. You're the captain of your ship. And it is an amazing, amazing journey that you are about to, to venture out on. And you alone, you alone, you alone, you're totally responsible for the quality of that journey. I mean, it's laid out there. It's laid out there. Opportunities are given and presented to you. It's laid out and, and we get to decide. We get to choose how we're going to start the journey and how we're going to take the journey and whether we're going to enjoy it or not. We start out being a little selfish and we're taught, we're enculturated into, into society, into the physical realm and, and learning how to navigate and, and, be, a, and, and, and be a part of a of, 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 of just a group of, of community of journeymen who's going and then but we're all on a we're all on our own individual journey but we just happen to be traveling in the same time space that's all okay so we start out in a state of selfishness but we kind of we go from me 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 to me and you to us and we and we go from there to understanding that there's, a, there's something called selflessness between self-care and self-love. And then there's selflessness. Wow. And we understand that. And that serves us. That does, that is something that serves all of us. All of us, there is no exempt for that. We all have the opportunity to learn to be. Now, this is something that selflessness it's it's inherent in us because we're connected because we desire that connectability that connectivity so selflessness is gives us the opportunity to connect to actually honor that connection that who we are uh, to each other it gives us an opportunity to demonstrate it to express it um so selflessness does that so we go from that self-centered to understanding ah we are connected and that is something, that's something that we have to honestly have to be reminded of. And but when we do wake up to that, usually when we wake up to that, to selflessness, that's almost 
that's pretty much the beginning of the journey that we take when we realize that it's just not just about us and that we're not going to travel this journey all by ourselves all the time it is my journey i'm got to i got to do it on my own but i've got i'm got company i've got people that can do it with me i can i can walk with them a bit i can you know have somebody to you know that you know to share experiences with on that journey that's what selflessness selflessness allows us it allows us to be connected it allows us to express express love and unconditional love and understanding and empathy for to 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 and for one another selflessness also is kind of like it gives us an opportunity to to acknowledge each other as human beings and just be be in that connected that that connectivity with one another it's just it's it's loving it's loving selflessly it's loving unconditionally it's empathy and i, I know a lot of people think that uh, imp, you know that imp, <laughs> empath, empath, empathic people are um I don't know. They're too whatever. I don't know. Again, they're not too anything because we all have empathy. We all are capable of empathy. All of us are. I don't care from, you know, what your desires or not or none desires might be. You, we all have the capability of being compassionate and understanding and empathetic with one another and looking and, and being selfless, being, you know, loving, loving over and beyond just our own personal needs or our own personal situation at that time. When, we, when we're selfless, it opens us up to a lot more than just our, our self-centeredness. It gives us an opportunity to understand many different, or see, or try to understand many different perspectives. Because everybody, we all have our different perspectives. So when we're connecting with one another, it does allow that selflessness, that act of selflessness and that love and that connect. The connectivity of selflessness gives us the opportunity to open our open our awareness and our horizon and our, our, our horizons. We we see uh, many many different situations. We're not just you know looking at you know this this one path. We we traveling we're traveling on the same road, and I can look over and you know what kind of car you're driving. You know what kind of car I'm driving. You know I got a five speed going on here. So we get to understand. We get to see things in a different kind of perspective, and that's something that I think, I really, looking at the way the world is, I think that people don't really understand the value of that, that opportunity, the, that diverse opportunity that's given us by having the relationships that we have with different people from all different types of walks of life, if you would. So you selflessness, if you, if you're, if you, don't think you have it. Cultivate that. Cultivate that in yourself, because it'll make your it'll make your journey a lot more interesting. It'll make it a lot less lonely. And you'll be healthy and you'll feel good in, in doing it because it you know it kind of does something for your for your heart rate and your heartbeat and you know just kind of makes you happy you know and that's nothing there's nothing there's nothing better for your health and your body than happiness and joy you know so th those those relationships gives you an opportunity. Uh, those those selfless acts gives you an opportunity to to cultivate those relationships and those ties and that and those connections, if you would. So selflessness, selfishness. I'm gonna leave it. I think I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go any further with it. I would just like to say that um, selflessness also improves your relationships. Okay, um, and it's and it's true for any kind of relationship. And I'm not just talking about. Uh, spouses and you know you, you're you know what you call the better half I don't know what that means but whatever uh, but I'm talking about your, your your relationship with your children your relationship with your your friendships um, your relationships with your your bosses and your the, the people that you work with it really gives you an opportunity because what it does it gives you an opportunity to not always focus on you but to you know, lift your head up and, you know, raise your eyes up a little bit and look at someone else. And it takes you, it gives you an opportunity to, to just get out of your, get out of your mind and your head about yourself and just listen, be able to listen and come from a heart space, you know, when you relate to other, other folk. So it's good. It's good for, it's, it's really good. It's good for that. 
that's that's probably for me one of the best because it is you know if you're traveling uh, if you're traveling a journey with somebody else it's just you know it's it's kind of it's kind of nice to you know have a good relationship going you know makes the makes the travel and the journey a lot more fun have a good time not by yourself all the time okay so I talked about new perspectives because it does give you an opportunity to do that and healthy. Yeah, I was I was kind of I was I was, kinda, I, was I was thinking about that because I think I said that before. You know, it gives you an opportunity to be healthy. Well, it, it, I, I when I said that I didn't realize that it helps lower your level of cortisol, cortisol, and that is the hormone that that has something to do with your cardiovascular system, your heart, and your you know your heart rate and stuff like that. So it you know, I said, oh, okay, you know, that's why it makes you feel better because you know it lowers that. That heart pumping stuff, you know, so it gets rid of those diseases. And the last thing they said here, which I have to, un I, have, I, I tend to agree. Well, two things. The one was it, uh, selflessness gives you a sense of peace, and yeah, I can see how it could because if you know if you are not so uptight about yourself all the time, you know, you kind of release a little bit, and you kind of look, and you start. Kind of start can laugh laugh about a few things, a few more things than you did. Because you're all stuck in your head about yourself and worried about whatever, and you start looking around and say, "Hey, she's in the same boat I'm in. I got some company, you know." And you kind of get a little laugh about it, and you know, you kind of release some of the you know the control that you've got and that pressure that you've got, and you let it go, let it go. So it's also it does, and it finally it says that selflessness can be a form of therapy, hmm. and it says that. Performing selfless acts can be a form of therapy because by helping others and focusing on them, we are taking ourselves, again, out of our own head, out of our own worries, out of our own problems. And we are, you know, just even if it's just for a few moments, even if it's just for a day or, you know, uh, going, going to play cards with, the, your, you know, your, your buddies or whatever, just for, you know, for that time, you just, you know, you're devoted to the, to that community to the group to you know to all that you know just to the card table you know and you just go hang out with the boy hang out with your buddies and your pals and and you're not work you know you just you know you just at peace about the situ about whatever is going on in your life and your situations and you get a a moment kind of a moment of peace a moment of peace so though that's uh that's that's all i'm going to talk about tonight so next week i want to go on into talking about self-reflection and, and moving on into self-discovery. I'm going to probably spend a little bit more time um, on self-reflection and self-discovery because that's when we're going to be talking about those connections that we have with each other and the relationships. And all of this is part of the journey. If you did not have an opportunity to reflect or uh, relate, relate, CCTV. relate to um, in a relationship, it would probably be a very boring journey first of all and another and, and you would miss out on a lot because part of this journey is the experiences that we have the manifestations that we that we manifest the creations that we create and we can't do any of that we can't create alone we can't manifest alone we can't have a relationship alone <laughs> you know it starts with us you know self love starts with us beginning and overflows but the relationship and the experiences that you have, they are over and beyond that self-centered person, yourself. You lear learn to love yourself. You learn you learn to love yourself in that when you're in that selfish little mode in that in the you know, in the baby. You understand who you are and then you love and you, you love on yourself and with you have loving family members around you, they help cultivate that self love in you and help you understand that you are the most important person in your, on your journey. You are. You're the most important. You're, the, you're it. So, and that, and that, that's where family and friends come in to help you understand that. Help you understand that you cultivate that self-love and that you are able to, once it's cultivated and you have it, then you can overflow it to, to me and to, to them, to, the, those, to the, uh, those others, the, to the other co-creators. But we're here the journey is to co-create, is to manifest experiences. And again, it's, not, it's nothing worse than a one-man experience. Yuck. Okay? Don't have, it's, 
you know, give me a break. Uh, give me somebody, you know, I want to, I want to deal with you. You know, I want somebody to have fun with. I want to, you know, I want to, you know, you know, you know, I need, I need a mirror every now and then. So come show up so I can see how I'm go, how I'm doing. We learn and we relate to one another. We re, we experience one another because we are each other. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it there. Selfish, selfless. Uh, you learn to you understand that self-care and all that self-love is in there and that learning, you know, how to share and, you know, be a part of something that's other than you. And we move on to, move on to next week. We're going to be talking about self-reflection, looking at that and moving on into self-discovery, which you are. You're on your journeys. I hope you all are enjoying your journeys. Um, this time of year is always fun. <laughs> you get some gifts. You get to go shopping and buy other folk gifts. You get to really, you know, act out some of these things that you've been practicing, you know, all, all along the way on your journey. So, ah, hope, you know, kind of culminate with the end of the year where you get to have a little fun and enjoy one another and, and you know, put some of those practices, those things that you've, you know, been experiencing and going through and learning and trying to understand. You put them to use this time of year. Christmas, the holidays are coming. So I'm a, if you're like me, I'm ready. I'm ready for it because I tell you, I'm ready for 2021. I am so ready for 2021. This is a, I don't know. I guess it was a nice start, but hey, let's keep it moving, y'all. Let's keep it moving. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. I hope you guys something out of this tonight. Um, I'm trying to think if I need to post anything. I will post a little bit about selfishness, so maybe give you give you a list of things to that, that identify your selflessness and your selfishness. I'll maybe do those. And remember, selfish ain't so bad. It's okay. It's all right. But as you get older, and mommy and daddy says, as you get older, you're a big boy now. You're a big girl now. You can, you know, you can put on your pants by yourself. You can get dressed by yourself. You can sleep alone in that bed by yourself. You don't have to come crawl in the bed with mommy and dad. You've got, you're a big girl now. You're a big boy now. So remember, when you're a child, you act like a child. You think like a child. You feel like a child. You be like a child. And you should. But when you get older, you, you learn how to share. But you still have those childish ways. And I don't want you to lose that. I don't want you to ever, ever, ever lose the fact that you are a child. Because you are always, we will always be a child of the universe. A child of God. A child of creation. Uh, and never lose that. Never lose that innocence of being a child. Be curious. Be curious. Love on each other. Be selfless. Do it for the higher, higher good. Take care of yourself. Love on yourself. Remember, love starts with you inside and it, it overflows. All right? It don't flow back the other way. It flows that way. It flows out. You guys have a great week. And that's coming up tomorrow's Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you on Sunday for 7 at 7. 7 o'clock, your mini life coach session. You guys, take care. I love you. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you when I see you. Manifest best in the meantime. Make lots of stuff. Take care. Good night.